Good morning. Welcome to day six of our 21 days of prayer. Hey, today we're going to be hearing from Megan Hill. And uh, she's a little concerned about her video. She feels like she may have rambled a little bit. But I want to let you know she shares with us a number of little stories from her life that represent a lesson that's really pretty powerful. Question I have for you. Does God speak to you through the big things of your life? Does he speak to you through big dramatic words or realizations? Or does he speak to you through the little moments? Or does God speak to you in all kinds of different ways? Megan's going to share with us some of the ways that God has been speaking to her over the previous few years, but especially a lesson that he's been teaching her over the recent few months. I hope this will be an encouragement to you. Hi everybody. My 21 days of prayer video is um, going to be different than I thought it was going to be a couple of days ago. My prayer life over the last couple of years, um, through it, God has been trying to teach me a lesson. Um, I think kind of three lessons in one that has taken me up until this weekend to I think actually learn it it may be even more complex than I understand now it always is um, but what I wanted to talk about as of say Friday is totally different than what I'm going to talk about today um, so I'm glad I've waited to make my video uh, because um, this is kind of a big lesson for me it's been about two years in the making and I hope I'm starting to learn it um, it began mm, maybe the, the late winter um, of 2018, I don't know, May, a couple of years ago in May, Joe's job changed from um, a, uh, a Tuesday through Saturday 8 to 5 job. His um, shift changed to four days a week, 10 hour shifts. And the day we found out that was going to happen, we were both extremely angry with his employer for making a decision that is going to affect our family life the way we, we thought it would. We had no, um, no thoughts of any positive change or positivity coming out of the shift change. It was all negative. And the morning he called me to tell me about it, we talked on the phone for about an hour while he was at work discussing uh, just how upset we were by it and what it was going to do to us and um, we hung up and then about two hours later I called him back. During those two hours I had um, gotten my Bible and a couple of my journals and I just sat in front of my fireplace on the couch with my Bible open reading some scripture. I can't remember the scripture I read. Um, but I was praying and I think the scripture I read had something to do with my prayers. But I remember after about two hours of, of feeling so upset by this change that was coming that we had no part in playing and making, um, I called Joe back and I said, God's telling me we're going to be okay. This will be all right. And he said, I've got the same feeling. So um, we were fortunate in that it only took two hours of prayer and talking with God for him to give us a piece about that. Not everything comes that quickly. Um, but I think that was kind of the initial reminder I needed in my life um, that God listens to us. He hears us. He hears us before we, we, before we speak to him. He knows what we're going to ask, but we have to take the time to ask him. And um, he did. He did that fairly quickly. And we came to an agreement that we were going to be all right. And let's look forward to seeing what God does in this change in our lives because obviously it's going to be for a reason. Um, there have been other opportunities in my life for me to learn this lesson and I think I've learned it slowly and tiny bits at a time. Um, things like when when we were looking for a new church, a, not a new church home, but just kind of a physical place for LCC to land after um, leasing for five years. We were looking for the place to land and um, some of you know that story but Pastor Billy had come along uh, the building we're in now found that and um, after praying about that location if that was going to be the location for our church family 
Um, I was newly, I think I had, I don't even know if I had come on staff yet. I hadn't. But uh, I was still praying about it and I felt like um, the Lord was giving me a knowledge and a peace that this was going to be our future home. And I shared that with um, some of the leadership of the church and that became um, a reality. They all, through their through their prayers and conversations with the Lord, also got the same um, idea and peace about pursuing this building as being our future home. And there were concerns about what was next door. Um, and again, through my, my prayer life regarding um, what that was going to mean for our church family being next door to what it was going to be next door to, the Lord also gave me a piece to share with Pastor Jeff and some of the other leadership that he was going to take care of it. And I said, I don't know what that's going to look like. He didn't tell me that, but um, but he's going to take care of it. So we don't need to worry about it. We just need to move. We need to move in. We need to take each step as it comes and he'll take care of the rest. And he did. Um, in April, let's see, um, April, you know, we were very newly into COVID and um, I'm a, a high risk patient. I'm, um, my health is fragile, immunocompromised. And we were very concerned about Joe um, being a being a cable technician going into homes day in and day out um, without knowing a lot about COVID and how to keep him safe, how to keep me safe. Um, we were fretting about how he's going to go to work and, and be okay. And he had been speaking with some of his supervisors about um, potential opportunities they may give him for, um, for just extra safety precautions because his wife was was at risk and there wasn't anything that they could do for us and we were again fretting about what that meant and how is he going to go to work and how what if I get sick and just freaking out honestly like just freaking out and uh, through a final conversation he had with one of his supervisors they offered him uh, 30 days of unpaid leave which we took we took reluctantly because we thought that's not fair that that's the only thing that they're gonna offer us there has to be more offerings they have to take care of their employees until about 30 minutes into that little tantrum uh, I realized this is the answer we were praying for protection and praying for something um, for the Lord to to give us favor in some way and he did that he gave us a way out. <laughs> he gave us a way to um, remove ourselves from the situation for a while and just uh, figure out what next steps were while, while his employer actually um, worked during that whole month to keep their technicians safe. And so by the time Joe went back to work after his 30 days, there were so many safety precautions in place. It was phenomenal. So again, answer to prayer that we were fretting and fritting and throwing fits about that if I had just stopped wasting my time throwing a fit first, the Lord would have probably had um, a more clear shot of giving me the answer before I, before I started freaking out on him. But he again answered, answered that prayer. Um, this one's silly. I'm going to share this little story with you. Uh, but actually, it's one of the, one of the catalysts to this whole lesson. Is a couple of weeks ago we're. Uh, out running errands as a family and let's see Joe had seen a car we were passing a car and he said I really like the color of that truck and I said yeah it's a pretty unique color I said I really like the color of uh, sometimes you see those vehicles that are a matte gray um, really unique kind of ugly but actually I really like them and uh, I haven't seen one of those in a long time I said I said out loud I haven't seen one of those matte gray vehicles in a while and Joe says like that one over there and just passing us coming the other direction was a matte gray vehicle and I said what in the world yeah just like that and I thought that's weird I don't really believe in coincidences I I don't I don't think that was just a coincidence what in the world was that? And I kept mulling it over and kept thinking, why in the world did that happen? Um, how have I not seen a matte gray car in months? Well, because I'm not out very often, that's how. But uh, as soon as I mention I like one, it's literally right upon us. And Joe pointed it out to me. And later on that day, as I'm still thinking about it, uh, God says, I listen to you. And I thought, well, I know that. I know you listen to me, but... 
I think you really want me to know. I, you listen to me. Apparently, I'm not getting it. That was just a nice little surprise to say I listen to you. And um, so over, you know, over the last two years, I've learned that I'm not in control of things. He's been teaching me that over and over. And I always think every time something comes up, I think and I tell Joe, I know that. I know I'm not in control. Why does God keep thinking he needs to teach me this lesson? I know I'm not in control. And I always think, I know he listens to me. I know that. That's been proven over and over again. So why does he think he keeps needing to teach me that he listens? Um, and I thought, well, there's got to be a reason. He doesn't just keep, you know, <laughs> teaching me the things that I don't need to learn. If he's trying to give me opportunity to learn, it's because I haven't learned it quite right or uh, to its fullest extent or capacity. Um, and then this weekend, here's how it culminates in this weekend. Uh, this weekend is, was extremely busy for me. As you know, Joe works, not as you know, but Joe works uh, four days and then he has a three day weekend. And um, so he's off Saturdays, Sundays and Mondays. And uh, this weekend was a really busy weekend. I had a lot of appointments earlier today and um, a lot of you know we were gonna have the core group relaunch um, on s yesterday on Sunday. And I was um, already a little bit stressed about that just because I haven't hosted anyone for quite a while. And although most of it's gonna be outside, it was still just kind of a little stressful for me. I'm excited about it, but there's some anxiety there. Um, and and uh, so Joe was injured on Friday night. And while I was already anxious about the weekend, the busyness and lack of resting opportunities this weekend and everything we had going on, Joe sprained his ankle pretty pretty well. And um, it immediately made me more anxious and kind of angry that he was going to be laid up all weekend and I was going to have to deal with all of these things a lot on my own. Um, the one guy that I lean on a lot to help me accomplish things that need kind of a team, he wasn't going to be involved in. And so I, I was, again, I was having a cow, um, really anxious through the roof and um, quite irritable, kind of cranky. And um, then Eloise had kind of a rough evening on um, Saturday and, and through her rough evening and Joe's injury, it became apparent we should re, uh, reschedule the core group relaunch. And um, normally I feel guilty about things like that, but this time I didn't because we had the support of the leadership of the church and we thought we could, I mean, it's not a cancellation, it's a postponement, so that's all right to do. And um, I was like, okay, that's a load off, that's great. Um, but then again, through the weekend, um, I realized that wasn't just, you know, that, that wasn't an accident. There's no coincidence there. I'm not saying that that God let Joe get hurt so my weekend wouldn't be so busy, but he has orchestrated these events. He's allowed them or orchestrated them, however you want to describe it. I, I believe he does both. Um, and, and through that, he's taken a load off of my shoulders. He's taking care of me. And um, I sat down just to, to bug Joe again, as, as anxious as I was, uh, on Saturday before we had decided to reschedule and I was still really stressed out I, I said why does everything I try to accomplish uh, why do I always feel like a failure um, I try to create a budget for our family and I have yet to accomplish a month's budget successfully I set a budget every month and, it, and we never we never are able to uh, nail that budget down and I, I keep getting frustrated with that. And I said, diet, I've been trying to lose weight for eight years since I first, well, seven maybe, since I got off of um, you know, dialysis, I've been trying to lose weight and everything I try, it doesn't work out. I always feel like a failure and I, and I, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm a failure in that. And um, I know I'm rambling, but it's hard to just, it's hard to accurately describe this lesson but the lesson is threefold. Um, through the last two years, what I've learned through these experiences, uh, through my prayer life, my conversations with God, and others that I'm not mentioning because this is getting long, um, is that I am not in control. And as much as I think I know that, I still try to run the show of my own life. Uh, 
I know I'm not in control, but it doesn't keep me from trying to be in control. And um, besides not being in control, God hears me. And as much as I always think, I know he hears me. That's why I talk to him. I apparently don't know that he listens to me like he does. And he keeps trying to show me the capacity of um, what, what, a, what my prayer life can be um, because he listens to me. And um, he takes care of me is kind of the third point. And it's, it's a big lesson. I don't think I'm finished learning it. I think it's just now kind of come into my peripheral. He'll, he'll, need to, he'll need to keep taking me through some things to really realize what this means, but um, that's, that's, what, that's why I talk to him. And that's why when things do occur, um, trials, struggles, frustrations, things that just raise my anxiety, I talk to him about them. Um, not always in like a very traditional style prayer. It's just talk. It's feeling. It's um, kind of broken sentences, just thoughts and words. But he always answers them in one way or another. And this time he's teaching me that he is in control and that he hears me and that he takes care of me. Um, and I, I want to learn that lesson. I want to learn it sooner rather than later because I don't want I don't want him to have to keep showing up in the ways that he has to to teach me this. But that's what I'm learning, and that's what I'm learning um, over the last couple of years. That's what I'm learning this weekend, and I find that when I vocalize what I'm learning, it's better for me. It sticks better, and it becomes more. Um, a, it's more ingrained in the way I live my Christian life and the way I speak to the Lord and the way I uh, try to progress in my walk. So I'm just sharing that with you guys. <laughs> um, some of it was a little bit personal, but uh, I think that's necessary, at least in this context, um, to share with you guys what he's been doing to teach me these lessons and um, I guess to ask you to keep praying with me for this and so I can pray for and with you guys about some of the same things. I know I'm not the only one that struggles with this, but um, that's my that's my bit. And I am sorry for any rambling I've done. I'm outside, it's hot. <laughs> but um, thanks for listening. And um, I look forward to seeing everyone else's videos in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I hope that was an encouragement to you. Megan spoke to us about three very specific lessons that God's been teaching her. And I hope that those lessons are encouraging to you. And I hope that you are growing in your own prayer journey, in your own prayer walk. Listen, we live in very weird times right now. And so as you start this day, let me encourage you to start it with God. And to say, God, would you speak into my heart? through the big things and the small things, no matter what's going on. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do ask that you would be at work in our lives, that you would take these moments and teach us what we need to learn, teach us what we're supposed to learn as a result of this time that we're in. Father, would you speak into our hearts and help us to grow more like Jesus, to become more like the people you've created us to be. And we thank you for giving us this time that we can spend with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you go with him through this day.